Hello to our viewers. We are back with day number 32. The influence of state and church. Amen. That's a pretty interesting topic. Well-known topic in Adventism. That's right. Um, what, what are we bringing to the table? Because this is not a present truth per se, but what, what do we bring to the table for our viewers that makes this topic of more interest? Well, one of the things I will definitely want for them to bear in mind um, is, is, is somewhat of an inversion, an opposite. Um, for starters, we often see church and state as something evil, but um, hopefully at some point we will show that church and state comes from God. Everything that exists has something good in the beginning. Amen, amen. I, I would like to say that to everything there is polarity, there is... Uh, that positive and negative, right. and we are often used to seeing things in a negative light, right. that when the positive comes, we can't identify it. Right. So um, the source of this prophecy, we don't see the term ter church and state in the Bible, but we have extracted the concept from the prophecies of Daniel. And this is in Daniel chapter 2, where Nebuchadnezzar had a dream of a statue. And we are all familiar with the, the concept of the statue. Right. But the emphasis of the church and state in this model is the toes. That was the fifth kingdom that was mixed with clay and iron. We can find this reading in Daniel chapter 2, verse 41 to 44. Let us have a quick reading of that. Daniel chapter 2. 2 verses 41 onward says, Whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part potter's clay and part iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of iron, for as much as iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mix with miry clay, and as the toes and feet were part iron and part clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. Okay, so if we cross-reference now and we look at this clay in context with other scriptures, here a little, there a little, Jeremiah chapter 18, verse 6, it says, As the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Amen. And we know that... God referred to Israel as his people, Amen. those who are called by his name. Amen. Um, we also read uh, in Isaiah 64, verse 8, But now, O Lord, thou art our father, we are the clay, and thou art our potter, we are the works of thine hands. Amen. So the clay here, it, it doesn't only represent God's church, it can represent people in general, because all God's people are the clay, um, but particularly so those who allow the potter to mold and shape the clay are his church. Right, and I want to somewhat piggyback or leap off the atonement. That is the clay. It's when true atonement is taking place within the heart. Amen, amen. Okay, so then we cross-reference also to understand what the iron represents. I'd like to go to Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 14, and it says, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, that they shall serve him, and I have given him the beasts of the fields also. Um, we know that God had delivered Israel into his hand, and not only Israel, there were surrounding nations. That Egypt, Syria, some of He the was the greatest nations. kingdom. He this is why he represented world. the head of gold. Correct. Amen. But he built, notice the Lord said, I will put a yoke of iron upon the necks of all these nations. Because what Nebuchadnezzar placed on these people uh, was... A yoke of iron. It was. It was oppression. It was the government were uh, extorting the people exactly. for gains to well done, develop sister. the it, country. It was actually extortion. It was high taxes. 
Uh, most governments today, if you notice, uh, elections are based upon whether governments are going to raise taxes or not. Um, if you go back to Nebuchadnezzar's dream, uh, when he was pompous, when he walked as a king with his neck high up, and he said, is this not the Babylon that I have built? Before he fulfilled that prophecy, and he asked Daniel the interpretation thereof, Daniel told him that he needed to break off his sins. Um, again, we dealt with this. Um, Daniel advised him to show mercy to the poor. Um, that was the yoke on the neck of the nations. Whenever you conquered a nation, the nation needed to pay taxes. Oh, that is no. how you suppress them so that they don't come back and fight with you. You, you make sure you take away um, their, their, their means. You enslave them as well. And Nebuchadnezzar also used a strategy where he, he took all the princes and the high-profile people from the country to, to put his mindset in them so that these rulers or these leaders would continue to in influence Absolutely. the people in his mindset. Right. And, and that's what Satan does to us. As exactly. Well. And again, just to, to bring it to, to a little bit of world history, that is what happened to Cuba. Or, um, America wanted to do with Cuba. Mm -hmm. After the, the revolution and Fidel won, they gave Cubans the the access to access United States. That's why, friends, when you go to the United States, you see um, in these airports a lot of people that speak Spanish. They're all Cubans. Um, but the United States gave way for them to come. The trick to that was that because Fidel Castro won the revolution, they would have crushed um, Cuba by having to extract these people. What kind of people? They wanted all their judges, doctors, and lawyers. But instead, Fidel made sure that all the criminals went to America and he kept all the good resources of um, his people. So again, um, you can definitely see a, a warfare there, a, a strategy, a technique um, of this iron and what the yoke looks like. Um, they're going to come in and they're going to take um, your, your best resources. All right. Um, as a matter of fact, it's even a Belizean Pharisees uh, with, with Guatemala. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, Guatemala, technically, they're saying if they're fighting with us, they, they, they want half Belize, which is from Punta Gorda all the way up to, to the Cebuan River here on the Hummingbird Highway. By the way, Agua Viva is not a part of it. I, I ensured that before I, I established myself here. All right. We're on the Mexican side. But again, it's, it's the pulling away of this, this, this resource that, that makes... The, that shows you what an iron yoke looks like. Mm -hmm. All right, it is always the taking away of your human resource. Mm -hmm. All right, it's the taking away your of your land, your, your yeah. minerals, your rights, your freedom, conscience. It's even taking away of your culture. So the, the concept of, of Nebuchadnezzar in this passage represents the government, the state, because right. the kings that's on the monarchy was the president, was the leader of the nation, of the people. Right. So it, it represents state, but it also represents oppression uh, under human leadership. Correct. In Revelation 19.15, it says that out of the mouth goeth a sword, a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treaded the winepress of the fierceness and the wrath of the Almighty God. And this is referring to Christ when he returns. Uh, in Revelation chapter 19, it's, it's describing when he returns, and it's, it says that you know he comes with the host of heaven, and he's crowned as King of kings and Lord of lords. Um, this concept is... is Stating that Christ is taking back the reins of his, of this earth and, and he Amen. will be the true and he will tread the wine press with the rod of iron. And that rod of iron is it's, it's referring to the wrath of God bringing coming to correct the injustices that has been taking place thus far. And I use the contrast between these two verses because Amen. notice that one is being uh, spearheaded by God himself and the other is human uh, leadership. Amen. And that is so important. Um, as a matter of fact, I think that um, those two verses should go together for all eternity, really. Um, many people fail to recognize that um, because Satan is a cop here, um, church and state was not really, um, it, it was not 
he did not invent it. All right, it was something of God. God has always had a church, state, government. It, it exactly it started from heaven. The angels were the were the church, and Christ Himself, um, along with the Father, was actually the government. So when Satan said he wanted to be like the Most High, um, what he wanted to do was to unite church and state, but underneath his ideology. So he came on earth, and he's trying to do the same thing. When you look at Israel, Samuel, God told Samuel, look, they're not rejecting you. They're rejecting me. If they want a king, all right, and they're rejecting God, then common sense, well, my common sense tells me that God was actually the state. He acted as the, ch the state, and his people was the church. So it was a church and state, but it worked harmoniously. Mm -hmm. So what yeah, God... It was one mind. Right, it was one mind. One so spirit. One spirit, and he acted through the prophet. So the prophet was actually the government because um, the, the, the prophet had that rod of correction. He had the iron, but it came from God. Mm -hmm. So God told them, look, if you want to replace me, he says somewhere, look, they're not replacing you. They're replacing me. I am that government. I am that good Nebuchadnezzar. And um, okay, if they want to replace me, fine. But let them know, since they want a human government, a human king, their men are going to have to run chariots, meaning that they're going to have to have an army. Their women are going to be servants in these palaces, and they're going to be paying a whole lot of what? Mm -hmm. Taxes. All right? God used to make them pay tax, but... He was the one that was merciful again. What do they do? Wave sheaves and, and, and so forth. It was forth. minimal. It was minimal. And again, to, to be honest, um, it was not that minimal. God's, God's, God taxes were very high. As a matter of fact. As high as his blessing. Uh -huh, that's the trick to it. Because when I check the world's taxes, Belize only has 12%. The highest we have gone is 15%, which is VAT. All right, the value added tax, but they paid up to 33 and a third percent. Ellen White calculated it. Um, but when you really look at it, the blessing that they got was a hundred always. He rebuked the divorce, so you're, you, you're absolutely right there. But really and truly, friends, um, viewers, what we're trying to show you is that God was that government that was leading Israel, which is the church. So God has the true church and state. Heaven has a church and state. Church and state does have its positiveness. It became negative when man um, started to be in control of it. Amen. Notice the topic for this session is the influence of church and state. Mm -hmm. There could be a positive influence right. and there could be a negative. Mm -hmm. And so far, all that we have experienced is the negative. Right. Now, in the passage that we read from Daniel... Uh, if we were to continue reading from verse 45, mm -hmm. it speaks of a kingdom that will be established. And that stems from the cutting out of the stone from the mountain that crushed this church and state system that would not mingle because yeah. it wasn't working for good. Right. Um, and that, cru that crushing is a replacing. It grows into a great mountain which represents the kingdom of God. Right. That mountain is... The, the successful joining of God's people, church, his government, his governance, Amen. the state. Amen. Um, so what is what we're understanding here that the, the, true, the true king of this kingdom uh, will take over and he will judge righteously and it will be a church, a, a righteous and a positive uh, influence of church and state. Now, we just want to emphasize a little bit more on this concept of the, the clay and the iron not mixing. If we can look at specific examples from the Bible and then work our way up to currently, because we know that these things are still existing currently, and it is what uh, Revelation 13 and 17 is really about, the, the beast and the image of the beast, um, it, it is about that church state influence and the effect, uh, whether f uh, for good or for bad. Right, as you have said, sis, it could be whether for good or whether for bad. You see, whenever um, the church really, which is the people, remember they are always a part of government, people fail to recognize that church people are governmental people, meaning that 
Mm-hmm. Um, for example, I live in Belize. All right. Um, I go to Seventh Day Adventist Church, but I also have a job with government. So what does that make me? That make me a part of the church, church and a part of the state. Now, depending on my ideology in the church, I will what transfer that to what my governmental duties. All right, that's just the way it goes. All right. So if we go back to Daniel 2, I want for the viewers to understand when they read it, they will see that the iron that mixed with clay, um, it automatically shows um, a division. All right. Um, but also, it also shows that it is also united. The problem is when it is united, not the iron with the clay, but when it is united with miry clay. Um, Daniel made the distinction between the potter's clay and the miry clay. If the iron, which is the government, is mixed with true clay, the potter's clay, that gives you the order of heaven. But if the iron is mixed with miry clay, then Daniel tells you that that miry clay is actually the seeds of men. And the seeds of men is actually the truth of men. Mm-hmm. And the truth of men is yeah, to false truth. it's a false truth. It is having to want to take the seat of God mm-hmm. and control the conscience of men. And that's exactly how Revelation dis- describes it. Amen. They they will um, blaspheme against God and they would want to sit in um, the seat of God, calling themselves God. Because right. when you try to judge, you are taking God's position. Amen. All right, so again, um, we, we, I guess we're going to go into the examples of, of, of um, David versus Saul to, to, to bring that um, Yes, and da- both um, David and Solomon, I think they were examples of, of righteous kings because they both had a relationship, uh, well, at least to the beginning for Solomon mm-hmm. um, and the ending. Right. Because the, the course that he took was his own experience of, the experience of realizing what God is really about. But um, they both had a, a connection with God, which made them uh, wise. Mm-hmm. They, they gained the wisdom of the Father because mm-hmm. of their close relationship. Right. And if you know, that's what God is trying to do with his people today. He wants to write his law on their hearts, being that the two become one, his spirit and his people become one that they could judge righteously again. Mm-hmm. Now, in the case of Saul, who um, in the beginning, the kings would take, I think Saul was the first king. Yes, Saul was yes. the first king. And the, the arrangement was for him to judge through the priest because the priest had the connection with God. Correct. So the, the priest was the iron and um, the people were the clay. Um, there's one more point that I want to, to bring out um, for, for maybe perhaps the um, Ellen White readers. Um, she did had um, some history on that concerning the movement in the United States. She said that when they were running from popery, all right, and they went to the United States, she said that the law was somewhat, um, well, not necessarily strict, but she believed that it went down a road that created disaster. What happened in the United States for you to get a government job, you needed to be a Christian. All right, so that mm-hmm. was church and state right there. Mm-hmm. So to join the government, you needed to be a part of the church. The idea behind it, I believe, was good. However, um, she said that it became disastrous because drunkards needed jobs. All right, um, for example, criminals like murderers needed jobs. So what did they do? They, they went and they, they joined a church to get a job, but they were what? Unchanging. So now you have the drunkard that is not changed mm-hmm. in the church. You have the murderer in the church that is not changed. Or the heart that is not subdued. So that's the miry clay. Right, right, that's the miry clay. So if you notice now, the church is having this dragon flood, if I should use that language, where... It have all these unrighteous people having to flood the church because they want a job from the state. All right. Um, so I just think that I needed to, to mention that for people to see how the miry um, clay looked in Ellen White time 
Um, and even in our time, state. because today all our constitutions are were drafted based on a, on a Christian ideology. Right. Um, because we came from a Christian movement right. or, or our country or, right. in fact, all of the English-speaking countries. We, we did this study before, the Ephraim and Manasseh being America and Great Britain right. and all the commonwealths underneath the, that um, realm were formed by some form of morali Christian morality. Right. So if you bring it all the way up to the time of Trump, um, you will hear people mentioning the moral majority. The moral majority is not necessarily the majority, you know. It's actually the minority, but they're the majority in the sense that they run government. Mm -hmm. um, you will see that these are the people that are Protestants, mm -hmm. and um, in Ellen White time, they call them Protestantism. Today, we can still call them Protestantism, but where are they? They, they run Congress. Again, these are people that goes to church. And... Um, their situation is that they believe that homosexuals doesn't have rights. All right, that is where the persecution came from. If you would watch CNN closely, you will see that um, t um, certain implementation that Obama did mm -hmm. in terms of having them to, to join the military and can get married mm -hmm. and so forth, uh, their, their tax benefit. These w things were revoked by, by the administration of Trump, showing you that really and truly who was in Congress. These men take the position in Congress underneath senator and so forth, but really and truly their ideology of their laws came from the Baptist church and the, and the um, right. Presbyterian church and the churches. In other words, morality. They thought they were doing God a favor. So you, you mm -hmm. can see the church and state uniting in, in Trump's time if you, if you watch the laws and um, where, where these men, men came from. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, but having said that, they call them the moral majority, but they're actually um, a group of people that is very small, but they, they are the majority because they have the ability to implement laws. And again, it is laws against people's conscience. You also had this law where um, if a company decides that you know, a woman should look womanly, meaning wear a skirt, and she comes in pants, um, the company... Um, had a right to, to, fire, to fire her. Again, that is against um, conscience. So you're seeing where, um, if you look at the, the state or Congress, really, it was church and state. These men was passing, the, I believe they were passing laws based upon their, their ideology of their Christian beliefs. Mm -hmm. And that was against the, the conscience of men. Because if a woman decides, look, I want to wear pants, all right, as long as she's doing the job, right? She has a right to a job, a right to, to, um, to, to housing and, you know, all the, the nice um, laws from the United Nations Charter, and that was being violated from through these, these type of laws. So, again, you can see that the clay is very miry. Mm -hmm. The other trick to this is that um, in our time, um, people or the Christians, they feel like they're doing God a justice. Favor. They're mm -hmm. doing God a favor. Um, here in Belize, we like to say God made Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve, mm -hmm. all right? But really and truly, we should leave that to, to God, mm -hmm. to judge. Amen. And we will be tapping more into these um, intricate truths right. about, you know, equality and, and right. to judge uh, the LGBT community and right. even other people who choose to do things like abortion and what's not, right. whether we are seeing righteously or we are exerting love and mercy and these things, Amen. we will cover them. So, um, and as we go on, it, we will be more deep. It will become more detailed, more clear to our viewers Amen. what the test of our time is about. Amen. So if you notice, church and state is a very nice springboard. To, to introduce these, these topics. Right. So if you, if you look at that on, on a personal level, individuals in our community, in our society, because we know that the whole is made up of, of single or individual units, the mindset of society on a whole, what we refer to as societal conditioning, which 
ties into religious conditioning as well. The That's two right. are really one. one. Um, is what influences. So in the in the case where you spoke about Congress having uh, people with Christian morals, it doesn't necessarily have to be. I'm not. I'm not saying it is not so, but. Right. In some cases, the people with, the, with these ideologies do influence the government because right here in Belize, you know, as we currently have, ha we had, the, had to have to deal with that situation of the, of the LGBTQ with the Caleb Orozco and that we had all the churches joining together, the leaders and with the people coming out to go against it. Now we're seeing that same uh, thing re being repeated that the, now that the government is seeking to uh, legalize marijuana in certain quantities, they are saying, no, it is harmful for our society. Um, the same thing is happening. Right. And what we see here is freedom of choice being taken away based on a, a human view of what is right and wrong. It's not exactly God's view or God's righteous judgment of the discernment between right and wrong. Right. Um, people fail to recognize, again, that, okay, um, when it comes on to the topic of marijuana, if you would ask me, well, don't write, I don't smoke it. But not because I don't smoke it, that means it is not good. All right? Um, I could show you research where um, marijuana does, does affect... Um, your reproductive system. They're their research on these things. But again, I, I like what one of my teacher taught me in Matt. He said, Martinez, uh, Matt theories are not proven by just simple theories. For example, if you take 100 reindeer and throw them over a hill, that you cannot conclude that reindeer can't fly because you haven't thrown every reindeer in the world. Well, it's the same thing. We can't say that marijuana affects each and every human being um, the same way. So by us saying, oh, it is bad, and we don't want it, as, um, especially based on morals of the church, then what we're doing is that we're judging. And it's a conditioning as well, because we have other things that are harmful, but are accepted. Alcohol kill more people than, right. than, than, than crack cocaine every year throughout the world, and we have made it legal. Right. Right. So we're just saying that the judgment that humans exercise and we do it in the name of Christ or in the name of God is not exactly godly. It's not godly. It's definitely not godly. And um, it, it could run us again into some serious problems as we're dealing with the subject of church and state. Um, it was the same problem the Jews have back then. Let's go back into the past to see what our present um, state looked like. Um, Israel, first of all, they chose their king. They recognized that the king, um, Saul himself, was ruthless. He almost killed his own son, Jonathan, because he made a law and Jonathan violated it, not recognizing that there was no violation there because the honey represents what? What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? Mm -hmm. The sweetness of the word was honey. Jonathan had the, the, the honey. That's why he could he have delivered the Israel from the war. Um, from, from his oppression, while Saul and his team was, was nowhere to be found, and he wants to kill his own son out of what? Pride. Um, these things are very, um, it, it shows the destructiveness again yes. of, you know, man leading um, the blind church. Blind leading blind. Right, the blind leading the blind. But it went on to the point where Israel started to follow rules of the rules of God in their own way. For example, they were not supposed to marry, intermarry into other nations. They interpreted eventually as, you know what, we are not supposed to mess with the other nations any at all. So, well, how are they going to be influenced to come to God? Um, they started to, to mention laws like, okay, if you spit on the ground, you're watering the plant. And by the time this thing reached Christ, the government, which was the Sanhedrin, having to rule the people, which was the church, was totally corrupt. Mm -hmm. um, exactly. They would have sermons where, if you notice, the blind man was there on the outer courts. Um, I could imagine his, his parents being inside, and they were preaching, you know, well done, Mr. and Mrs. Sam. Um, you know, God has made you well, and they would say amen, but it's not like your blind son that was mind blind. That's why he's not in the church today. He's a sinner. 
No, friends, I know that song's horrible. No, it's correct because if you bring that to modern day, that's what they're doing with the with these people who are born with um it's a physical mm-hmm. disability and it's mm-hmm. it it may not seem as a disability because they're functioning normal. Right. But to be born with one sex and have the hormones of another is right. not normal. Right. But they are cast out, right. you know, um, and seen as less than human right. because of, of who they are. It's right. not what they do, it's who they are. They identify that way because right. that's what their body is telling them they are. Right. So, again, if we play with those, with, with those two rem or um, position, one modern, one old, all right, or the past, um, Jesus went and he, he healed the blind man. All right, and eventually the Pharisees they were upset with it because first he did it on the Sabbath. Now Jesus telling them, "Look, Moses gave you circumcision to do on the Sabbath. Circumcision was a good thing you celebrated, man. Why will I not make this man that was born blind celebrated?" But I want to go back to the sermon. How do I know that that was the Pharisees and the Sadducees' sermon? The disciples they used to listen to the sermons before they listened to. To the words of Christ and John, they said, Master, whose sin was it? Was it the sin of the parent or the sin of the man that allowed him to be born blind? That is what they were taught from the Sanhedrin. That is how wicked church and state in yes. the time of Christ became. Yes. All right? Or have become. No discernment. All right? No discernment whatsoever. Mm-hmm. All right? Caiaphas and his government ruling the people, being the state, it was oppression. All right, they would tell you, you know what, yes. bring the arms to the, to, the, to the church. Don't worry about your appice. All these things are there in the mm-hmm. Bible, showing you... And Christ came to correct these injustices. All these things, because that's the mire clay. That's the mingling of the seed with men. It's truth that was distorted. So and Christ, today we, we have truth distorted in every corner, in every direction. Thing. We now have become Caiaphas, and we're cheering, God made Adam and Eve. And not Adam and Steve, persecution. Well, really and truly, we should remember the first topic, which is the atonement. And from the cross, it is more for spiritual. And it is our spiritual part of us that we need to get Amen. up to mark because the body will be destroyed. And God did mention to us, Amen. don't worry about the body. I know that the body has defects. You were born in sin and shape in iniquity. I know your inheritance, but I am here to fix that. So he says no one will enter the kingdom unless he is born again. Amen. And this concept is of being born again is exactly what we shared in um, yesterday's message uh, of the atonement at heart. It's a renewing of our minds. Be, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Understand that as a man thinketh, so is he. That means whatever truths are stored in your mind whatever ideology or belief system you go by that's what makes you who you are christ is saying the father wills for us to worship in spirit Spirit and in truth truth. which means that you you need the truth to be uh liberated in the spirit and to be operating by the right spirit um and this truth is a renewing of your mind it means that you need to replace the old wrong false beliefs with right. the new correct beliefs right. and by that you become a new person because you are not that same person who used to uh believe x y and z and live under this I, uh, idealism or this conditioning of what your church or your society have taught you to believe or right. to or to be right correct so the the born again experience. Amen. It's not a one time experience. Right. It's ongoing. It's, it's ongoing. And the issues are ongoing, as you have said. So it's ongoing. I will add on that and say the issues are ongoing. Yes. We have dealt again with, with, this, with, the, with these topics. They're, they're um, interchangeable somewhat. Church and state, really, today is not necessarily Saturday versus Sunday. Um, we dealt with this before. Ellen White talks about Saturday versus Sunday. Okay, brother, you were delving into, into the, the next, the next topic, day number thirty-three, and it. We, yes, go ahead. We are going to preview our viewers on, right. um, on 
the topic of will there be a Sondela? Right. Um, so really when you start looking at church and state again, church and state has these laws that they implement um, that they believe up, God approves of, like, like Saturday versus Sunday. And um, the church again thinks that that will run throughout, but that's not the way Satan operates, all right, when it comes to church and state. It's ever moving. The light continues to move, as you have said, so Satan continues to move his um, trap or, um, I think the word is what, snare? Mm -hmm. All right, if you like. His deception. Right, his deception. And he changes them slight so that he continues to allow the Christians to do um, the persecution. That is what he, he did yeah. in the time of the Dark Ages. The people that were doing the persecution really was the church, and they used the state, which were the kings, to deal with um, mm -hmm. people that were against their dogmas. Mm -hmm. All right? So you will see that that, again, is, is ever-changing. And this is the reason why we have to understand what church and state is all about um, in the Bible and the examples that the Bible gave. Amen, amen. Well, let us close with a word of prayer. I believe that the topic was, um, was thorough. And... The concept of church and state in its positive light, we know that at the restoration of things, the kingdom of God will be established and God's true representatives on earth will be able to judge righteously. Amen. And the two will become one again in a, in a positive light. It is Amen. a replacement of the old system of doing things. The Absolutely. Old way of doing things. And we need to conclude again with, with Solomon. If you notice when you read the book of Solomon, that was... God's ideal church and state where he says Amen. that everybody respected Solomon and his kingdom because um, he judged the situation between the two women Amen. and they knew that the spirit of God was with him so no countries made no war with him. That was the perfect church and state. That was a true and Sabbath rest. And they visited rest. him to understand wisdom. Amen. I love that, that judgment he did with the two women because what it shows is that he used the tool of the sword, which is the word of God, Amen. to measure these two characters. And right. they were two they were they were two harlots, I believe, who yes. were living together. Right. And both of them had children without a father. Right. And so it happened that the, the child died and they were fighting over the over the child. Right. But if you look at the beauty of the story, what, what he was bringing out is whether there is love Amen. Or, or hate That's or fear. Right. Amen. You know, whether you would sacrifice another person for your own good, good. or if you would uh, sacrifice yourself for the good of others. others. In this case, that woman was willing to sacrifice herself for the good of her child. So she and was... that's what love is. Amen. So it brought out the work of love. Amen. And this is what the test of our time is about. It's, it's God proving uh, whether we love or not. or not. And that is going to be proven through the topic of church and state or the reality of church and state. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you once again for this wonderful opportunity to have discussed yet your word. Father, we know that when church unites with the state, it binds man's conscience, and the world is moving towards hate more than love when it comes on to this topic. But Lord, you have left us your spirit. We thank you for your spirit. We pray that you may continue to give us your spirit, continue mm -hmm. to give the viewers your spirit, that truly we may be able to understand the, the things of our time, the son, the law of our time. We Ask that you may bless us and may you bring us back yet again for another session. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.